Hmm, okay. Surely these screws are not to a customer's iPad, right? Hey everybody, Jason here. I hope you're all doing really good. Today I'm looking at what I believe to be a soldering iron that was sent here by a company called Secure? Sequire? Well, let's not waste any time here. Let's get this thing opened up. I'm always confused by the boxes that are just completely covered in tape. Like, I don't... I mean, where do you... Aha! Oh, yeah. It's like Christmas in April. There we are. Hmm. Okay, we've got just a little bit more chaos to deal with here. All right. Here comes the moment we have all been waiting for. Drum roll, please. Oh, looky here. This is the Secure SI012 Mini Soldering Iron. There doesn't seem to be a whole lot of weight here. Let's, uh, let's see here. All right, here comes the moment we have all been waiting for. Seems like I might have said that already. All right, let's get this thing opened up and see what we've got inside. I'm always excited to get new tools, really. <laughs> this thing came with uh, solder, lead-free solder. I actually... I'm not sure I know anybody in this business that would use this stuff. Okay, we came, it came with some toolage. Apparently there might be some maintenance or something that needs done. Let's not look at any of that for now. Let's just skip right to the guts. So here we have the actual handle for the unit, which is also going to be like the, you know, the, the brains of the operation here. And it came with a couple of tips. So we've got sort of a wedge blade tip there. And then we've got a, a smaller tip. And here's just a little bit closer exactly what those tips look like. So when I compare these tips to the standard Hacko tips that come with uh, the, uh, what is it, the 2027 handle, they look to be the exact same tip. So I'm actually pretty excited to see that the tips between these units seem to be interchangeable. I mean, I'm pretty sure I could just, you know, take one of these tips from my Hacko iron and they'll click right in there. That's interesting. I wonder if it will cause anything to catch on fire. Now, right away, one of the things that I find appealing is that this thing comes with a, a really easy capability here to run it straight off of one of these XT60 connectors. This is something that is more useful to people like in the RC drone and, you know, the, the radio control community. You know, this is a really standard size connector to hook a, you know, just a, a battery pack to from an RC drone or a helicopter or something. I wonder if it has an adapter to hook it up otherwise. Let's see, so we've got what looks to be the... All right, so we've got a portable... Come on, baby. Soldering stand. And it's got one of these inflatable like foam pad things. These pads, they start out really, really thin, but you just add a little bit of water to that and it swells right up and Honestly, I actually prefer that method of tip cleaning over what I use now, which is like a more of a, um, a wire mesh stuff that I think wears out my tips. So the tools that this came with, we've basically got a Allen wrench. It looks like we've got some spare copper contacts and a few screws. So having a closer look at the handle slash controller itself, I am pretty pleased to see that it looks like this can be powered by USB-C or it can be powered by an RC battery pack. I wonder exactly what the input specification is here because depending on how many cells are in the battery pack, uh, there can be a pretty wide range of voltages that could be coming out of these things. And since they're lithium battery packs, they pack quite a punch. So it did come with some instructions. And if we look through here, I should be able to find something that I can understand. Here we go, I can understand this chart. Oh yes, I think this is the input voltage right here. It looks like it'll run on between 12 to 25 volts on that plug. I don't exactly understand the instructions very well. Maybe I'm on the wrong... Maybe I'm in the wrong... Oh, oh well, what do you know? You flip it over and the instructions become English. Hey, how about that? Now I can read that. Power supply voltage, it says 20 volts. And over here it says power port 5525 support 12 volts through 25 volts. That's... Uh, 3S through 6S LiPos. 
Okay, so I, I think I'm pretty comfortable with that 3S through 6S LiPo. I'm gonna try it first off a of USB-C and see what happens. Now, I do have a certain amount of doubts about delivering like sizable current across the USB-C cable. So I'm not sure if this setup is gonna work because this is not an actual USB-C supply. In other words, this is only gonna be delivering five volts across this cable, whereas USB-C, it, it has the ability to go higher than that. So let's, I'm gonna try this cable first and we'll just see if it's capable of making this thing power on. Let's get a, a tip in here. Hang on a minute, that's the wrong end. Whew, don't do that. We're just gonna slip a tip down in here. Oh, I see now. The spare copper contacts that came with this that are in the tools, those are actually right inside there. That is what the tip plugs into, just down inside of there like that. All right, let's see what we get now when we connect a USB-C cable. Ooh, it's sung music. Firmware update. Is this thing needing me to plug it in and run a firmware update? It's gonna be because I plugged in this cable Instead of just trying to power it from this cable, it's actually like connecting with data. How about that? A miniature digital portable soldering iron that wants to connect to my computer. Okay, well, I guess we're gonna go ahead and use the other power cord here a little bit sooner than I thought. All right, so I've decided instead of using a battery pack to power this thing, I'm gonna power it off of my DC power supply so we can see exactly what sort of power it's drawing. All right, so I'm gonna hook it up on this channel over here. See if I can do this without uh, shorting anything together, shall we? Oh yeah, perfect. I'm gonna go ahead, we're gonna start with the power supply on, let's just do 12 volts. That was the minimum input voltage. There we go, we're set to 12 volts at three amps. And I'm looking, the manual, the instructions here actually show different voltages and times for the different tips. And looking at the wattages here, it actually looks like my power supply should be able to keep up with this. So I'm gonna turn the power supply on. We are putting out a nice 12 volts. And now let's go ahead and connect the iron. Secure. Ooh. Now we get some stuff on the screen. It's not trying to like force us into firmware update mode, right? All right, so how do you make this thing work? Basically, it only has two buttons, so there can't be a whole lot of things we can do wrong here. Uh, 12 volts. Is this actually reporting the supply voltage right this second? If it is, that is surprisingly accurate. Let's gradually raise the voltage just out of curiosity here. We're now at 13 volts. Look at that. My power supply, it is set on 13.01. This thing is registering 13 volts. That's pretty accurate. So the two buttons that are on here, they are labeled B and A, and I'm not sure which one to push. So we're just gonna choose one. Uh, a, becomes, a comes before B, so I'm gonna go ahead and push A. Okay, now that changes, that's changing our temperature here. Now we're changing it down to 150C, 100C. And so this goes all the way up to 450C. Okay, how do I make it solder? I'm gonna say that we most likely just need to hold one of these buttons down. Uh, let's see, let's hold down the A button. It says work. Oh yeah, look at that thing heating up. 93, 110. Now, as this is warming up here, I'm actually scrambling to get some solder on here because I want to make sure the tip stays tinned. Let's do that in camera, shall we? Our very first soldering, and I... I I totally missed it. Gosh, I'm such an amateur. So it's going to sit there and stay at 300 degrees, 350 degrees C until what? Till I push the other button? No, that raised it on the fly. So with it set on work, we can change the temperature. And to stop the iron, I'm going to hold down the other button. Oh my goodness, we have a menu. Maybe I should read the, uh, <laughs> maybe I should read the directions. 
If I just wait, maybe it'll go back. Yeah, there we go. That's how it goes back. So let me try this once more. We're going to hold down this button to turn the iron on. When it turns on, it switches and it says work. And then to turn the iron off, we're basically just going to hold down the same button. And now it says stop. Yeah, see that? That's, that's nice and easy. We hold down A to start and stop the iron. But if we hold down B, it goes into a, it goes into like a tree of menus where you can change settings on this thing. How much power is it actually drawing? I was all caught up in the moment here and I didn't even look at the current. So let's see, we turn it on to where the element kicks on. We're actually drawing 18 watts of power. What did the manual say at 12 volts? At 12 volts, it says it's going to draw 16 watts of power, but we're not at 12 volts, we're at 13. So this is actually looking really good. So right here on the screen with me, you can see the sort of power that this is consuming. It's, it's just, it's given little blips of power, just, just enough to keep it up to temp. And I'm going to go ahead and raise the temp up to 400 and it should ramp up the power a little, but not a lot. We're drawing, you know, 1.4 amps. We're coming up on 400 degrees C and it should drop off on the power. And I'm looking at this tiny little chart right here. Oh, very nice. So I've been running this thing for a little while now at 300 degrees C and I'm kind of surprised. I don't feel the handle getting hot. Uh, it still seems pretty cool. Now sitting here at idle, this thing is only drawing, you know, it's it, it just barely fluctuating a little bit, but I suspect fact whenever I start to melt some solder which wow it actually it does that really well um, it draws you know it's actually doing that pretty effortlessly I was expecting it to really ramp the current up and it didn't so hmm, that's actually pretty nice let me turn it off okay guys I have to say I was fully prepared to dislike this thing uh, when I seen that we're plugging this hot element into like a plastic housing I thought this was something that was going to cause, you know, I, I didn't think that it would have this good of a feel to it. I thought it would be like immediately melty, but it's not. This has a pretty good feel to it, and it seems to really melt solder fast. Now, look at this. Look here. I was just considering using the other tip, but if we really look at these two tips. One of them is long. One of them is short. And, oh, look at this. Beep, beep, beep. It's griping at me. Check the tip. All right, we won't we won't torture you too much. We'll, we'll we'll put you a tip back in there. But if we look inside of this casing very closely, there's actually nowhere there's no contacts for the shorter tip. So that explains the Allen wrench and the couple of extra contacts here with screws. What that means is that if you want to use the other tip, you've actually got to get inside this thing and install the other contacts, but I suspect with the other contacts installed in here, you would no longer be able to use the longer tip because then those contacts, they're gonna touch, you know, right here. They're gonna short out on that part of the tip. So it did come with the two different types of tips, but for some reason, this wedge tip, it's, a, it's built differently and it would need to be switched over to the, to the other contacts. I am curious to see if we can get this thing to do some real world work here. All right, I've got it cooled all the way off. At least I think so. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and feed this thing just a little bit more onions. I'll set the power supply at about 20 volts. That's above its minimum, but still below its maximum. And what I'm looking to see here is exactly how much time does this take to heat up? Alrighty, then I've got my power supply set to 20 volts and I'm going to connect the arm. Sequoia version 2.6. We are fully cooled off. We are at 32 degrees C. All right, I'm going to push the button to kick this thing on. And let's just see how fast it heats up and what sort of current it draws. We are drawing almost 2.2 amps. It is drawing 40 watts. We're at 170 degrees, 230, 267, 300. That is completely acceptable. I mean, that's, that's fast. That's honestly, I don't feel like I have any reason to make it run that hard. I'm the type of guy that wants to like tone it back a little bit and maybe prolong the life here. 
So I'm just, I don't know. Let's run it on, let's run it on 18 volts for this little test here. I'm curious to see if I can make this thing work in a real world, real world situation for me. So here's a look at that tip under the microscope. It looks like that. I'm going to go ahead and flood that with some solder. As you can see, that's, you know, it's significantly larger than what I'm used to working with on this channel, what you normally see me using. If we compare that tip to my 0.1 millimeter conical micro pencil tip, there's the size difference that we're looking at. I mean, they are significantly different in size. So this may not be like the ideal tip set up for like phone repair. I believe the smallest tip that you can get in this size, I'm not really sure what the smallest tip is available in this style, uh, but they do actually get pretty small. So you can put a significantly smaller tip in this handle. All right, let's see what it will do in a little bit of a real world situation for me. I've got in front of me here an iPhone 11 board that doesn't really need any real world work. It just, it's a donor board. So I'm gonna see what this iron will do to it. We're up to 300 degrees C. Let's get some flux on here. And as you can see, this board is completely, totally cold. And look at the size of that tip compared to what you're used to seeing me work with. Let's just see how much power it has here. I'm gonna see what it'll do on this board cold. Now, not even my hacko gear will do this, so I won't be surprised if this iron can't keep up. Yeah, it's, uh, it is struggling. What sort of power are we drawing? We're drawing 12 watts. Yeah, not even my hacko gear will do that. It might do it a little bit better than this. I'm not sure. Let's crank the voltage up. Give it 22 volts and see if that changes the way things look. Yeah, there's just too much ground plane here in this PCB. So when I'm soldering, even whenever I'm using the, the higher end hacko iron, I almost always have a hot air gun in my left hand because I'm using that to finesse the board and preheat it. So I'm going to set this over here all, you know, on about 300 degrees C and just start finessing the temperature of this board up and then see if I can get this thing to glide around just like I would with my other irons. All right, so here we go. I'm going to begin warming this up with some hot air. Makes a huge difference. It's entirely doable. That's pretty much cleaned up. I'd say almost good enough to put an IC on it. So this tip here, I'm going to be more happy with working on larger projects like, uh, you know, drone stuff and some of my Arduino projects and larger circuit boards and stuff that I'm working on. And I actually do really like that it runs just off a of straight DC, so I can just run that off the same battery packs that fly my drone. But for the purpose of what I do here for this business and on this channel, this tip really is, I think, just a little bit large. I would really like to know if I'm gonna be able to use this handle with the other tips that came with my Hacko gear. So I'm gonna give that a try, like right now. So I'll remove the tip that came with it. It should start griping, check tip. Let's see if this thing will work with a standard tip here. By standard, I mean one that I got like from Allspec or something. Look at there. We start seeing a temperature reading right away. That's a really good sign. Let's see if this sucker will warm. Let's just let it warm up to... It said short out, didn't it? It did not work, did it? Let's try again. Work. We're staying at 64, uh-oh, 100 degrees, 150, 200. This thing's actually working. Look at that. Wait a minute, where are we going here? I'm set on 250. Where are you going there, mister? We don't want to go wandering all up there. Huh, well, isn't this just exciting? 
it's actually going to attempt to melt that solder. Not out at the very tip, but that's, you know, that that's reasonable. Let's crank this thing up to 300. There we go. Now with this tip, it is, it's going a little bit warm. I set it to 300. It goes significantly over it, but then it sort of backs back down. Let's see just how stable that remains. I'm going to melt some solder here. Staying at 300. I was wondering if it would do that. When it has to rerun the heating element, it is ramping up a little bit far. It's going over 300. But it falls back down to 300. So that's really cool. It'll actually work with all the standard tips that I already have. All right, so now I've got one of my standard tips on here. Let's see what that, uh, let's see what it looks like. Yeah, I would expect the board to drag it down and, and cool it down pretty quickly. But I'm really just quite impressed that this thing is capable of running the standard tip. Let's warm this board up a little bit. So for what it is, this thing, this thing actually works really well. I mean, it can do it. I'm going to try to use it to remove this capacitor. So for capacitor removal, I'm just going to do what I normally do. I just dip the iron here in leaded solder. I like to flood some onto one side of it and on the other and just pop it right off. So since I have spent hundreds, if not maybe even thousands of hours with the JS02 tip, I'm going to need to try this out and see exactly what it can do. Let's just see if while set on 300 degrees C, if this JS02 will do some work for us, I'm just going to try to see if I can flood some solder onto this connector here. There we go. We are up to temp in real time. I mean, it is, it is really fast. The JS02 tip seems to be working fabulously. Let's see if it will keep up with this challenge. Seems okay-ish so far. It looks like it's raised the temperature of the copper up far enough, but not the actual connector. I'm going to raise the temperature of the iron here. We're going to go ahead and head right on up to 400 degrees C. There it goes. Hopefully it don't self-destruct. There we go. We are at 400 degrees C. And you know, it actually did not pass it. Let's see if this does us any different. I'm going to try to get the hottest part of that tip, which is the bend, right on the connector. See if I can get the whole thing to flood. Oh, yeah, there we go. It's, it's acting a little different. Hmm. Seems okay-ish. Let's just try this once more. Okie dokie. So one more time, I've got my JS02 set to 400 degrees C. And let's see if we can get this thing to flood this little connector with some solder. Come on, baby. I'm starting to struggle a little bit because my helping hands is in the other room and I'm just having trouble keeping it still. I think we're dealing with a lack of flux here, fellas. Yeah, this iron is just, it is not struggling one bit to raise the temperature of this entire piece. So if, even if we try to stick solder down here, I mean, I think it'll stick, it'll stick on here just about anywhere. This whole entire piece has been warmed up by the heating element on here. This is actually working really well. Okay, now I'm going to do the same exact thing with the tip that came with the iron. Honestly, I'm expecting it to work pretty well. Now, I am slightly worried maybe about damaging a tip or something. I don't want to damage this thing. So I'm going to reduce the temperature back down to 300 degrees C. We are going to turn it on, and I'm going to see, once it warms up to temp here, just how well of a job it will do flooding some solder onto this connector. And let's give it like the ultra fair advantage. Let's just go ahead and pre-flood that with some flux. And here we go. This is 6337 leaded solder. No problem flooding this thing with solder. Let's see. Let's see if I can get it to stick up here. 
I believe it has this whole entire piece warmed up to the point of melting solder. Now, if it's not right at the point, like if it's not hot enough, we could turn this up some, but honestly, I don't think that that is going to be necessary. This tip is seeming to do it exactly like it is, just as it is. So here we are looking at this same logic board. It is completely cold right now. And I've got this JS02 tip on here and it is set on 400 degrees C. Well, this handle really drives this thing nicely. I'm gotta say guys, I really was not expecting to like this thing. This iron just really seems to work exceptionally well. And if I was using only these T15 tips, uh, this would work for me just in the world of cell phone repair. I mean, this is, this is working. Let's try it out on this PMIC area here. This board is cold, so I'm going to start flooding this with leaded solder. And let's just see if we can smooth this out on a cold board. This is no supplementary, supplementing heat or anything. This thing would actually do it. How about that? Yeah, so with everything in the package here, it's actually like a complete portable soldering station in a convenient, you know, zip-up case. And as long as I've been fiddling around with this thing and using it, the casing of it never really has gotten warm, so that's actually pretty pleasing. Now, just for fun, I would like to go ahead and see how this thing does on one of my RC battery packs. This is a 3000 milliamp hour, 14.8 volt pack. So let's see how that works on here. I'm just gonna be connecting that right here. Ooh, I hear bells. Okay, it says my battery pack has 15.2 volt arenies. I'm gonna turn the power on. And away we go, this thing warms up and is almost ready to solder. Wonder just how fast it'll drain that big old battery pack. That is a pretty big battery pack, but I haven't really charged it in quite some time. Well, there you have it. That's a pretty stinking cool setup, really. Just the RC battery pack hooked straight to the iron. So as much as I really like this thing, I feel like somebody in my audience will be able to use this more than me. I mean, I think I would use it like with my RC hobby and maybe some of my other projects and stuff that I work on. But to be completely honest, I just, I have a lot of irons and I would like to give this to somebody that will actually be able to use it. If you would like for me to send this to you, please click like on this video and then comment the words need this in the comments below. And what I'm gonna do is just pick somebody at random to send this to and I'll get your address from you and then uh, ship this to you, no strings attached. So please let me know what you think in the comments below. I feel like it's uh, it's a reasonable quality build. They've used uh, quite a bit of metal out here to keep the hot iron from actually touching this plastic shroud. For any of you interested in the sort of circuitry, that's sort of what it looks like there. I do like how they have put it into a clear housing so you can just literally see everything inside of it. And there we go. Oh. All this instruction reading, and it's written right there on the side of it. 12 to 25 volts, 3S to 6S LiPo. So that's it for this one, everybody. If you are interested in purchasing one of these, I'm going to leave some links in the description below and some information on to how to find these people. And I look forward to sending this to somebody that's going to get more use out of it than I will. I'm just worried if I keep it, it's going to wind up, it'll be zipped up in this case, and that's where it'll stay. I might just get it out once in a great while. So uh, anyways, guys, that's it for now. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Have a good day. Oh, and real quickly here, I almost forgot to verify that this thing will run on USB-C. I'm going to try it on an actual USB-C charging brick and we get... I thought that would work out just fine. So it'll run on USB-C with no problem. And 20 volts. Let's make sure we get this iron holder back in a static bag. There we go. Oh, can't forget the instructions. There we go, pretty much brand new. Almost forgot the solder. What would the next guy do without the lead-free solder?